investors. Today we're going to go through some trending tools that I see here in the Sydney job market. These probably won't be the same tools available or in demand in your area, but this is what I observed from my career so far. Now that we've got a solid command of the command line and some basic experience with GitHub, we might want to take our technical skills to the next level. I'm going to go over a few things today. I'm going to go over Cyprus and contract testing. First of all, uh, Cyprus is a trending tool for web automation. It's different to Selenium. It's not just like Selenium, it's just a little different. It's created by JavaScript developers for developers and it's to help web developers test their own web apps. There are some online courses for getting up to speed with Cyprus. Um, it's a tool we're using on, on my team and I do see quite a few job ads with this tool in mind. Uh, contract testing is a, another tool we're using within uh, quite a few teams that I've worked on, especially in a microservice architecture. If you've got two APIs that are talking to each other, contract testing or packed testing allows you to decouple system integration testing. So you don't need to have a fully fledged end-to-end -end test environment set up just to test if two APIs can talk to each other. You can have this API over here write a contract and say, I expect to see uh, data in this JSON format when I hit this API over here. And the next time this API API over here builds, it'll pull down the contract from the packed broker, execute the contract against itself and goes, yes, I meet the contract. Otherwise, it'll fail the build. So if you break the communication between two APIs, you actually fail at the build level rather than at the integrated test environment level. I see a lot of backend te teams using these types of tools. Uh, so for example, Pact Broker was all, uh, developed by Beth Scurry uh, in Melbourne when she was uh, she was working for, she's working for DS. Beth Scurry is a, a developer at at DS, uh, and she was uh, contracting at REA Group, and that's where the uh, the idea behind the Pact Broker came about. REA Group have been huge pioneers, I think, in the microservice industry. And to give you a bit of an overview, Beth Scurry has this uh, blog on the Pact.io project as well. Uh, Pact Flow, I think, is the framework that uh, her company that she's consulting on now works with. Uh, promises to say goodbye to end-to-end -end testing. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, or at least uh, integrated end-to-end -end test environments. And I'll share these links as well. But I think it's a practice that's worth keeping up to date up to date if you have API backends and you're interested in doing more API testing. Helping your team flesh out their packed or contract testing frameworks could be really useful. I don't recommend starting with a tool like Appium or Selenium. If you're just getting started in your technical career, these are just tools. Uh, and automation tools change as often as the, the seasons do. I recommend starting with a good technical base and building up your software development skills before jumping straight into a tool. Um, so for example, as part of my mobile app test strategy, um, I collaborate with the engineers on our team and we use, because we develop our app in native, uh, we're using Espresso for Android and XE Test for, for iOS. Uh, I prefer to collaborate with the engineers I'm working with in the tools that they're used to um, as opposed to having uh, test cases in Appium. If you have a separate repository over here with all of your tests in it, you decrease collaboration with the software developers on your team. No one wants to touch that test code with a 10-foot pole. And often when you let testers create their own test projects, um, they don't follow the same architectural practices or best software development practices that software developers are used to following. So it can be a little bit hard to, harder to read uh, that code as well. And, and if it's using another language that developers don't really know, you're introducing the, the friction. If I have to check out another repository in another language and use another IDE um, to collaborate on those testing tools, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, if you want to focus on where to start with automation testing, I have a visual risk-based framework um, where you can walk through the common flows in your app and prioritize those based on impact and frequency of use. So for example, say you've got a couple of different flows through your app like registration, contact us and whatnot. 
Uh, and this, this example just goes through how to structure that framework. On your x-axis, draw a frequency of use, and on your y-axis, impact on the user if that feature is broken. And map out all of your features, or flows. And then figure out where they belong in that priority. There might be something in the top corner, you might give three stars and go, this is really important. We want to automate these features first because they're always used by our customers. But for example, the contact us feature, might not be used all that much. And you might even question why that feature is even in your app. So you can prioritize where to start your automation using just a visual risk-based heuristic, if you like. And you might also want to reflect other elements of uh, risk in that, because this is just one element of risk. Um, it doesn't encompass things like security testing or accessibility or whatnot. So you might want to come up with some different ways of visualizing those elements of risk. Now, you should focus on learning tools that help you collaborate with developers. If your developers are programming in React Native and other cross-platform tools, you should try to be where the developers are at. If you can use the tools and the technology that your developers are using, you're more likely to collaborate more effectively. And, and so that's why I don't recommend just starting with automation tools or one particular tech stack or one particular framework. You have to focus on what works for you and your team. And, and that's really up to you and what's happening in your context. But this is uh, some of the tools that are trending in the Sydney job market area. Uh, Cypress and packed contract testing are useful and they, they get you closer to where the, the developers are at and some of the struggles they're, with, they're facing in their software development quality practices. Thank you.